you know, Hello, I'm everyone, and welcome to Family Equality Story oh. Hour. Um, this week, we are so excited to share three amazing books with you all, all about strong girls. And we already have a few strong girls on screen. Okay. Um, right now, we need strong girls and boys more than ever. You might have noticed there's a lot of things happening on your computer screen these days, like this event. At Family Equality, we're hosting a bunch of big, exciting events for kids like you, your parents, and even your older brothers and sisters. Events like dance parties, boot camp workouts, and more as part of our program that we like to call The Neighborhood. Your parents can learn more about The Neighborhood by visiting familyequality.org neighborhood or clicking the link in the comments, which will be there in a moment. But now, without further ado, I am so excited to introduce you all to the amazing authors who wrote the books we're reading today. Maybe you've seen some of their books in libraries or on your own bookshelves. The folks on your screen right now wrote those books just like you write letters or write homework. And if you haven't seen these books before, get ready to get your socks knocked off. We've got an hour of feminists, princesses, and nostrilliers. Up first, is um, Kelly Colombini. Kelly was born in the faraway place called South Africa. She likes to draw and bake and nap and play with her dog, Eli. And she's here to read her amazing story, Norris the Nostralier. So give her a round of applause. She might not be able to hear it, but she can feel it. So shake your hips, stomp your feet and clap yeah. for Kelly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so excited to be here. Hi, everybody. Hi, friends. Hi, Haley. Biggest fan. Thank you, Family Equality and Anna and Tristan for hosting this event and for sharing our stories with the world. I'm so excited to be here today. So if you're wondering how the story of noses and nostrils came about, for as long as I can remember, I have been fascinated by noses and nostrils. In a world that tends to admire the traditionally beautiful people, I think it's the wonky, crooked, bulbous, wonderfully weird noses that make people different and special. And we must celebrate those uniquenesses. Like Anna said, I grew up in South Africa, which was a melting pot of diversity. So I feel very privileged to have come from there. I'm a graphic designer and I love to draw. I've illustrated a few kids' books in the past, but I always wanted to write my own one. So one day, a few years ago, after excitedly telling my husband about what must be the 500 no's that I'd seen and loved, he said to me, make a kid's book about noses. You have to. So that is how the story of Norris the Nostralia came about. I do hope you'll enjoy it. All right, let's begin. Norris is a Nostralia, an explorer of nostrils. This is her. Norris is friendly funny and kind. She's quite resolute when she makes up her mind. Her eyes are bright and she loves her toes. But Norris is not very fond of her nose. It's a little bit puffy and a tiny bit wonky and Norris believes it belongs on a donkey. She wants a new nose, a different kind. Then she has an idea. Yes, she's made up her mind. I'm going to go on a special quest to find the perfect nose, the best. She packs her supplies a lot of stuff. Being in Australia can get rough. And off she goes. Some of the nostrils she sees are quite small. Some are long. Some 
at all. Nara sees nostrils that are filled up with hair. She'd love to grab some, but she doesn't dare. Some of the nostrils she finds are like bowls. Round and enormous are those nose holes. Some nostrils are bulbous. Some nostrils have flare. Some are just flary. You can see way up there. Animal nostrils, nostrils on dogs, rat nostrils, fat nostrils, nostrils on hogs. So many glorious nostrils around, high up and sideways and down on the ground. Norris has finished her great nostril quest. How will she decide which ones are the best? All these noses are gorgeous. They've got nostrilly zest. I can't pick a winner. They all are the best. My nose might be different, but now I can see it's wonky and puffy and perfect for me. The end. I didn't start writing this book thinking that it would end with a message about self-love, but I'm glad I did. So I thought I'd share a little bit about the process of writing with you, of writing a kid's book with you, because people have asked me, what's your process? And my answer is, it is different for everybody. So I have this teeny tiny little notebook that I write little terrible notes in. And those, there's a fun little drawing that turned into that eventually. So the beginnings are very, very, very rough, but everyone's got their way of doing things. Uh, like I said, this is the first kid's book that I wrote. So who knows what will happen next time. Um, I've also brought some of my old drawings to share with you all. That was one of the very first versions of Norris. As you can see, she has no nostrils. We had to fix that later because it's a book about nostrils and noses. And I thought I'd just share some of my, some might say failed attempts. I call them versions. Um, drawing's fun. The more you draw, the more you see in your art and Maybe someday it can turn into a kid's book as well. So there's a few little dogs. Some more dogs. Couldn't figure out what Nor Norris's dog was going to look like. There it is. There's our little winner. And there's more Norris. Lots more Norris. And as you can see, these drawings are really rough. There's the little donkey. These are really rough and they ended up I ended up scanning them in and tracing them digitally on the computer. There's the little small nostrils. Um, it's one of my favorite ones where she's feeling really proud, but still no nostrils. Um, so this page was the very, very last page I did, the animal ones. They almost didn't make it into the book, but I'm thrilled that they did. So it started off like this, ended up like this. Um, and that was a lot of hours of digitizing. So that's, that's kind of what my drawing book looks like. Um, I just wanted to share with you guys a little, a little bit of a story. Just that body positivity is so important, as we all know, and self-worth is one of the greatest gifts that you could teach your child. I feel like in today's age of social media, we're under so much scrutiny. Everyone has something they want to change to fix their frizzy hair or wobbly knees or wonky nose. And Norris embodies those insecurities while she goes on her search for a 
better knows, she notices the beauty and uniquenesses of all the different ones around her and ultimately learns to appreciate her own. I feel like the story managed to touch on that message of self-love but still be a fun, engaging, silly read for kids with a concept that can be carried over into many facets of our lives. If you enjoyed the story of Norris, please follow your nose to Norris Than Australia's Facebook page or NorrisThanAustralia.com to order your signed copy. From now until Sunday, I will be donating a portion of book sales to Family Equality because I am so thankful for all that you do. And head on over to NorrisThanAustralia.com as well for some free activity sheets that I made. I did a little word search for you guys. You can download them. And there's some coloring pages. There's a llama that my husband very kindly colored in for me this morning. I've got a sloth, which is my favorite. And there's a flamingo and more will come soon. So please feel free to download those and keep yourselves busy for a little while. And thank you, thank you, thank you. That is it from me today. Um, Feel free to follow us on Instagram at Norris and Australia. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Yay, thank you so much, Kelly. Um, that was amazing. If if you guys like Norris and Australia, like Kelly said, go follow all of those links, go get your signed copy, support family equality, support Kelly, and tell us in the comments so that Kelly can see what you thought of her book, um, give give her heart emojis, smiley face emojis. Let's give her some love for, for sharing such an important message and such a great story with us today. So thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. Um, Bye. And next, we will be inviting to the screen and the stage, Mark and Zoe. Um, <laughs> Zoe's rushing over. She's reading too. So <laughs> um, Mark Lewin and his daughter, Zoe. Mark is from Paraguay, another faraway place. He is a psychotherapist, which means he handles brains and feelings. He's also a dad and a writer of children's book, children's books, like the one he's about to read. Zoe, his daughter, is the strong, strong girl who inspired his book, What Does a Princess Really Look Like? We can't wait to learn from both of them what makes a princess a princess. So let's give him a big, big round of applause so that all the way across computer screens, he and his daughter feel it. Take it away. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So maybe what we're going to do is we're going to ask if people want to write in the comments. So if your parents can write what you're saying, our question is, when you think of a princess, what, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think about? Like, maybe, Zoe, we are going to say some things that some people think about. Um, but I would like to see if anybody wants to make a comment, write it, write it down, and let's see it. Zoe, what are some pe things that people tell us that they think about when they think of princesses? Let's see one thing. Let's see. Like, they think that princesses always have to be perfect. Yeah, but they are perfect. Like, what? Like they're perfect Like when they have to, like, drink their little tea, right? Like, pinky up and so, so like, good manners all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, somebody said an answer. Graceful. Always oh. graceful. Do you see it? So what does graceful mean? Like, how do we say what graceful means? Graceful is like, like always like happy. good. Well, yes, always looking like you're happy. Fancy, that's a good one. Fancy, always polite. There we go. And they need a prince to save them. A lot of the princesses <laughs> that we heard of, they always get saved at the end, right? <laughs> Like, she's rolling her eyes. Look what she said. She's rolling her eyes when she says that. Can you do that? Say she needs a prince and roll your eyes. She needs, yeah. she needs a prince. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sparkly dresses. Yes. So that's what everybody is saying. Princes are like. Princesses are like. And so we're going to read what does a princess really look like. And then afterwards, if you want, there's going to be a link somewhere that they're going to make available. But you can also go to our website. There, this is the coloring and activity book. That is you, There are some free pages for you to complete afterwards with the book. That's called The True Colors of a Princess. And that just came out is this oh, one. Oh, well, that, yeah, we'll talk about that one too. <laughs> That's a coloring book that we'll talk about. 
Awesome. So, what does the princess really look like? Let's get started. Yeah, no. Let's go with this one here first. All right. So, this little girl, not so little, <laughs> eight-year-old girl, is her name is Zoe. And in this book, we've got a girl, and her name is Chloe. Chloe. Easy way to say. So, let's start it. This is Chloe. She loves princesses and ballerinas. Every day she twirls and leaps from room to room, kind of imagining that her house is her castle. Maybe you'd like to dance. Maybe you don't like to dance, but this Chloe, this girl likes to. Me. And so you do too, yes. And what does this page say? Sometimes her dads dance along. Sometimes her dads dance along. That's the family. Do you have dance parties? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we can do some dance. You can do some dance moves right there, right now. We can't see you, but you can do it for fun. Somebody said some princesses are mean. That's true too. Actually, yeah. So look, she is always dancing and wanting to be a princess, but today she is not. She, the house is quiet, and she's working on a special project. She is creating her very own princess ballerina. And she wants her princess to be perfect. 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 So she starts drawing a head, makes a circle first. And she says, inside our head is where our smarts are. And she thinks to herself, this princess is really smart. So we have something special for you because we have some signs. They're just regular signs we made up. So for smart, Zoe, do you know the sign? Yes. What is it? How do you spell it? You put your finger, two fingers out actually, put it on your brain, and you say smart. Yep, so let's do it together. One, two, three. Smart. smart. Yeah, all right. Now she needs hair. So look at that. She goes into her, her art supply box, and she pulls out all this hair, and she says, princesses have beautiful hair. So she pauses, and she's like, oh, wait a minute. Um... Actually, princesses are not all about what they look like. Somebody said some princesses are smart and some are not. That's true. Every princess does not have to be all the things. Then she starts, she just gets really excited. She's like, ooh, I've got a smart princess here. I've, it's not just about what you look like. And she starts talking to her creation, right? And she says, let's see, can you see that there? She says, I will give you the best eyes and ears because it's good for princesses to be very observant. The whole town and the people come to the princess and the king and the queen and they tell them what they need. The princess needs to know how to help them. So princesses can also be observant. Let's see it. Observant. Yeah. So we've got observant. Let's see. First one, smart. Smart. Observant. Yeah. I hope you're doing this at home with us. And now I will give you a mouth, he said. Here. You need a mouth to speak kind words. What are some kind words? Thank you. Thank you. And polite. Well, yeah, polite words. Also, like, kind words to other people could be, I really like you. Um, but she, you also need to speak when you are frustrated. Do princesses ever get frustrated? Yes. I think they do, like everybody. So I wonder if you get frustrated. So if you ever get frustrated, let's see if we can all make a face that looks like a frustrated face. Mm. Is that your frustrated face? And now, do you have a sound that makes the frustrated? And you can do it at home. And when we have that, our arms might also do something. What do our arms do when we're frustrated? Uh, mm, really mad. So, oh, somebody says, Arr. I see it. Arr, says another person. So when we and any princess feels all oh, that is happening, and it's like, Arr, it has to come out of the body somehow. And the princess is going to take a deep breath. I take a deep breath. And then she's going to. Speak up. Speak up. She's going to say it. She's going to say, hey, I'm frustrated. I need some help. Can you say it where you are? Hey, I'm frustrated. I need some help. Hey, I'm frustrated. I need some help. Please. Yep, that's right. So the princess has a mouth to do that. And then it says you must speak up when something's wrong. 
and you see something's wrong, you've got to say something. So we have a sign for it. Speak up. How do we do that? Put your two hands under here. Then you say, speak up. There we go. One, two, three. Speak, speak up. up. Now we got it from the top. One, two, three. Smart. Smart. Observant. Smart. Speak up. up. Yeah. All right. So look at one time. Chloe talked to her friend. Her friend was doing something that she didn't want her to do. You can see it, and maybe you can recognize there what the friend is about to do. And Chloe says, please don't do that. That's unkind. And then Ellie stopped because she used her own voice. Ah, oh, Chloe sighs. Being a princess, that's a lot of work. This is not easy. But then she gets really excited as she thinks of the next thing. Can you read the word? It says... A crown! Woohoo! Yeah, a crown, a crown, a crown, a crown! She glues beautiful jewels on the princess's head and she oh. says, You wear this crown so everybody knows that you make big decisions for your kingdom. Wow, she looks and says, You look so important. So, our sign for important is important. We don't have a lot of room here to do this. You just put your arms out and you say, I'm important. It's kind of like your hands are in balance. Uh-huh. Right. That's right. Important. Important. All right. Stop. Smart. Observant. Important. Speak up. Important. Important. There we go. All right. Let's go next. She says, we're not done yet, though. Your neck holds your head up high. And when Chloe holds her neck up, she... Look what that, look what that looks like. And then she feels brave. And our sign for brave... Put your hands on your hips if you have the room here. You can come up there, chest out, and you say, brave. 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 Yes. So all of them, let's see. Smart. Smart. Observant. Speak up. Important. Brave. Bravery. <laughs> bravery. We can do bravery. Ooh, and your arms. She looks in the mirror. Can you see that? The light is messing up. Ooh, mm -hmm. and your arms. You are strong. And I know everybody knows what the sign for strong is, right? Strong, but you have to say it with the voice. You can't just be like strong. You have to go strong. Yeah, one more time. Strong. Oh, I wish I could hear what everybody is saying at home from the start. Smart, observant, speak up, important, brave, strong. <laughs> there we go. She takes uh -huh. she takes a thick, thick, thick crayon and draws the strong arms of a princess. All right, time for legs. You are going places. When you know what you want, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. That's right. You look at it like, like looking for something, like an explorer, and you say, nothing can stop you. So let's do it. Ready for it? On your mark, set, go. Yeah. Smart, observant, speak up. What is it? Oh, important. Brave. Strong. Strong. Nothing, Nothing can, can stop, stop you. Ah, oh, see, you did it. I, I messed up a little bit, but <laughs> Zoe's got it all under control. So she's got all this about the princess, and now she takes a big chunk of paper. Yeah, give me a second, okay? I'll give you the next moment. Mm -hmm. And she looks at that like, big chunk of paper and cuts out a dress and wants to glue it on. And she puts all this glue. Did you do that when you make it? You put all the glue all over the paper and she puts it on and then she says... Oh, no! What's going on? The dress is crooked! Oh, no! It's wrong! It wasn't supposed to be that way! So she tries to pull it off. Do you know what that sound? She tries to pull it off. <sighs> and she can't! And then she gets really sad and says, Oh, gosh. You were supposed to be perfect. Oh, man. Can you want to read this? I'll allow it. At that moment, Daddy and Papa peeked their heads around the door. See, there come Daddy and Papa. What do they say? Can, can we come in and see what you created? Can we see what you created? That's how they talk. So <laughs> Did that talk? Chloe, is she, does she want them to see it? No. Doesn't want them to see it. Because what, how is she feeling? Kind of sad. Sad. And, and she's nervous. probably and nervous. And probably embarrassed because look, she's looking at her thing and she doesn't want him to see it. 
it still has a mistake and she doesn't want anybody to see her mistakes. But then daddy come in and they say, wow, look. And the dress makes it look like she is dancing. dancing. <laughs> oh, that's right, says Chloe. This princess loves to dance. She's so relieved. Whew. That, her papa says, just like you. Just like me. And then she says, do you remember what it says on this page? Here. Yes, I think she is just like me. Yeah, so she didn't have to be perfect or any of the other things. She could just be like her, like she already is. And yeah. that's what it is. So um, um, let's do the signs together. And then at the back of the book, if you buy this cover, like you can, there's a part back here that you can create your own princess. There we go. Yeah. Do you want to read this to them to say they know what it says? Okay. Let's read that. Princesses can look all kinds of ways. They can be artists, ninjas, explorers, builders, or anything they like. Draw your own princess here. That's good. That's good. Yeah, so then you get to draw it here. And if you want to do more drawings and things, we've got this one. It's called The True Colors of a Princess. Some of these pages are uh, for free. If you go to uh, somewhere in the link, maybe somebody's going to comment on that. We have that one too, says somebody. Ah, I love it. Um, like, like places, there's like this, pages like this that can be colored. It's kind of the light is not is messing it up. It says some prin the princess can be smart. It says she can be a scientist. And hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's show them this about she's kind and she's helping people out. And there's also like a little maze that I really like. Princesses sometimes even need to ask for help. Nobody's perfect. So that's this one. And the other one is the true colors of family. The true color. That's the new coloring book. Just came out. Yeah, let's see if we can mess make and it so it doesn't doesn't. It's kind of it's a so this is a coloring book of all families that have two moms, two dads, one mom, one dad. Um so were, were you gonna say something else, Zoe, about this one? You said and and it also has like all these cool things that you can do. Uh -huh. And also if you want to trace it under a wax pad, you can do that. So you can trace it and say that you drew it because you did. Oh, look at that. That's a good idea. So that's, that's that. Um, let's do one more time. All the things, um, all the things that the princess can have. What does the princess look like? Let's see, what really matters is, are you gonna do it together? It's okay, with the light, that's okay, here we go. Smart, Smart observant, observant, speak up, up. important, brave, brave, oh, brave. brave. Strong. strong, nothing can stop you. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you all for listening in. Mwah. Aww. Yay, <laughs> thank you so much, Mark and Zoe. What did what? everyone think of that? Did you guys maybe learn something new about what a princess looks like? What makes a princess a princess? I know I did. Share your thoughts in the comments so that we can all soak in the love. So Thank you so much. Up next, we're gonna have Lauren Brantz, who we're gonna bring to the screen now, if you just bear with me. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a baby net? All right, hello, yay. Hi! Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. Up last, but certainly not least, we have best-selling author and illustrator, which is a fancy word for a person who draws, Lauren Brantz. Um, she draws and tells stories about cupcakes and grown-ups and feminist babies. Um, so everyone, give her a round of applause, just like before you want to jump and stomp and clap so that she feels it from all the way far away. It's Lauren Brant. Hi, everybody. Thank you for that intro um, and those beautiful books that we just read. I hope everyone is having a nice cozy day inside with their family and is ready to read some books. So I'm going to be reading some of my feminist baby books. We'll see how much time we have. Um, but the first one we'll start with is the first book now. Does anyone know what a feminist is? Yes, a feminist is someone who believes a person that's a boy or a girl 
or a girl and a boy or not a, bro a girl or a boy deserves to be treated fairly. And I think that's pretty nice. You think that you think that's nice too? Good. All right. And when I read this book, I like to put on my feminist baby bow. So I have a ton of different bows. Is anyone out there wearing a bow? My baby's wearing a bow right now. She's wearing a pink bow because she likes pink. Um, let's see, what color should I wear? I think I'll wear blue and yellow and what the heck, I'll wear pink too. So we got pink, we got yellow, we got blue. All right, we have all these beautiful colors. Let's read. Okay, Feminist Baby. Feminist Baby loves to dance. And I actually have a baby demonstrator to do a dance portion of this. This is Dahlia and she loves to dance. Dance, 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 dance. <laughs> this is how she dances. How do you dance? Are you dancing at home? I dance like this. All right. Feminist baby loves to dance. Feminist baby says no to pants. You see her little tushy? So cute. Feminist baby likes pink and blue. Sometimes she'll throw up on you. I know my baby throws up on me all the time. It's great. Feminist baby chooses what to wear. And if you don't like it, she doesn't care. Did you choose what to wear today? I chose my outfit. I always wear black, just makes things easier. Feminist baby makes lots of noise. Can you make lots of noise? You clap your hands. Oh. Stomp your feet. Lots of noise. Oh, I actually even have a shaker. Yes. So good. Feminist baby throws her toys. Now, you really shouldn't throw your toys, but, you know, babies, they're, they're learning about gravity. They want to see things fall. So they throw their toys and it's fine. Feminist baby plays with dolls and cars. And when she sings, she's a baby rock star. Can you sing? You go, la! I'm, I'm not as good of a singer as Feminist Baby, but I, I try, me in the shower. Feminist Baby is as smart as she seems. Feminist Baby can be whatever she dreams, and so can you. You're all so smart and capable. All right, let's see. I think we have time for more. We'll do Feminist Baby, he's a feminist too, because everyone can be a feminist. Feminist baby shoots for the sky like a superhero. Feminist baby knows it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. I cry sometimes, your daddy cries sometimes, boys cry, girls cry, dogs cry, cats cry. It's okay to cry. Feminist baby toots and giggles. Feminist baby claps and wiggles. Can you clap and wiggle? I can clap and wiggle. Took me many years to learn that skill, but I, I mastered it. Feminist baby loves to learn. Feminist baby takes his turn. Do you take your turn when you're with your friends? It's a nice thing to do. Feminist baby is who he wants to be, which is a ballerina dinosaur. Feminist baby believes in me. Do you believe in yourself? I believe in you. Feminist baby teases on his dolls. Feminist baby is breaking down walls. See, he's kicking down his Legos. I'm glad, I, I see your comments. It's so nice that your son likes to be a butterfly dinosaur. Feminist baby is here to say, feminism is for everyone. Let's start today. Yay. All right. Should we read one more? Okay, we'll, we'll read the, the second book. Yes, please, okay. Feminist Baby finds her voice. Feminist Baby is learning to talk. She says what she thinks and it totally rocks. Do you say what you think? That's good if you do. Everyone wants to know what you think. It's very important. Feminist Baby says, let's all share. Feminist Babies have lots of flair. You go like this if you have flair. Yeah. Feminist babies stand up tall. Equal rights and toys for all. Everyone deserves toys. 
and healthcare. Feminist babies not afraid to speak. No bath, she yells, and away she streaks. She's running from her bath. She's got a little tushy out again. Feminist baby says, ba for her bottle. My baby has recently learned ba and ma and da. Did you say ba when you were a little baby? She and the gang live life full throttle. Feminist baby stops and listens, especially when her friends are dishing. It's always good to stop and listen when someone else is talking to you. So you can hear what they're saying. Feminist babies use their words. Feminist babies will be heard. Yay. And now that we're all done reading, we can finish with what I always do when we finish reading a bubble dance party. <laughs> Everybody dance, dance. Alexa, play disco music really loud. Dance, 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 dance. Dance, 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 dance. Dolly doesn't seem too impressed. Can you get the bubble? Yay, bubbles. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you have a very oh, feminist. That was awesome. <laughs> Yay! That's so great. And ending with a disco dance party. That's not that's not a bad way to end these things. So thank you so much, Lauren. That was that was great. If you guys liked Feminist Baby and all the other books in that series, um, put an emoji in the comments so Lauren can see all of the love. And now I'll just bring everyone back up to the the final disco dance party. <laughs> Yay! Hello everyone. Um, with that, we've finished up story hour for this week. Family Equality is so, so grateful and thankful that these talented artists and writers could share their stories with us today. If you are grateful, please let us know in the comments. I know we're all cooped up inside and probably a few of us are feeling a little crazy, but it's wonderful to come together and read about the strong girls that make this world go round. So everyone, no matter where you are, say a big, big thank you to these great folks for taking the time today to read to us. Thank you guys so much. And again, if you like this reading, we host one every week right here. We also host events for parents, older siblings, and more. You just have to check us out at familyequality.org slash neighborhoods. The link will be in the comments so you don't have to remember it. Don't worry about that. And finally, if you want to add these books to your bookshelves and support these great creators, stay tuned. I'll be posting links and tags and all that fancy stuff over on our Facebook. In the meantime, we will see you next week. Say bye. 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 bye.